The Adventures of David Perkins. Like, subscribe, comment. Hello and welcome to The Adventures of David Perkins. This time I'm walking around the Palazzo Ducale in Venice. The Palazzo Ducale is a masterpiece of Gothic architecture. From its 14th and 15th century original foundations to the significant Renaissance and opulent Mannerist adjunctions. The structure is made up of three large blocks. The wing towards the St Mark's Basin is the oldest, rebuilt from the year 1340 onwards. The wing towards St Mark's Square was built in its present form from 1424 and the canal side wing, which houses the Doge's apartments and offices, was built between 1483 and 1565. The first stable settlements in the Venetian lagoon came just after the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the year 476. Gradually, these settlements became more established and were considered as outposts of the Byzantine Empire, and by the beginning of the 19th century, Venice enjoyed a reasonable level of independence. By the year 810, Doge Angelo Partecipazio moved the seat of government from the island of Malamocco to the area of Rivo Alto, and it was then decided that the Palazzo Ducale should be built. However, no trace of this original building remains. The Palazzo would have been accessed by a large fortified gateway, where the Porta della Carta now stands. The buildings within these walls housed public offices, rooms, prisons, the doge's apartments, stables, armories and other rooms associated with the palace. In the 10th century, the Palazzo Ducale was partially destroyed by a fire, and subsequent reconstruction works were undertaken at the behest of Doge Sebastiano Ziani. A great reformer, Doge Ziani radically changed the layout of the entire St Mark's Square area. Two new structures were built for his palace, one facing the Piazzetta to house courts and legal institutions, and the other overlooking St Mark's Basin to house government institutions. These new palaces probably had Byzantine Venetian architectural features, but unfortunately only a few traces of this period now remain. At the end of the 13th century, it became necessary to extend the palace once more. Political changes in 1297 led to a significant increase in the number of people who had the right to participate in the legislative assembly meetings. The works which would result in the building that we can see today started in 1340 under Doge Bartolomeo Gradenigo and were concerned mostly with the side of the palace that faces the lagoon. In 1365, the Paduan artist Guarentio was commissioned to decorate the east wall of the council chamber with a large fresco. The great council met in this chamber for the first time in 1419. In 1424, Doge Francesco Foscari decided to continue the renovation work on the side of the building overlooking the Piazzetta San Marco. The new wing was designed as a continuation of that overlooking the lagoon. A ground floor arcade on the outside, with open first floor balconies running along the facade. The vast Sala della Scrutinio, formerly the library, was built on the same floor as the Great Council Chamber, and its large windows and the pinnacled parapet took up some decorative motifs that had been previously used. The Piazzetta's façade was completed with the construction of the Porta della Carta, a work by Giovanni and Bartolomeo Bon. Works on the other wings of the palace would not come until later. These would start with the construction of the Foscari entrance, beyond the Porta della Carta, culminating in the Foscari arch. However, this work was not completed until the early 1480s, with Doge Giovanni Moscenigo. In 1483, a violent fire broke out in the canal side of the palace, which housed the Doge's apartments. Once again, important reconstruction works became necessary, and Antonio Rizzo was commissioned, and it was he who introduced the new Renaissance architectural language to the building. An entirely new structure was raised alongside the canal, from the Ponte della Canonica to the Ponte della Paglia. 
Works were completed by 1510, and in the meantime, Rizzo had been replaced by Maestro Pietro Lombardo, who reviewed the original decoration of the facade and of the giant staircase in the internal courtyard of the palace. By 1515, Antonio Abondi took over the work from Lombardo, finally completing the building work in 1559. However, in 1574, another fire destroyed some of the second floor rooms, fortunately without undermining the structure. In 1577, the repair work had only just been completed when another huge fire damaged the Sala dello Scrutinio and the Great Council Chamber. Reconstruction works were then rapidly undertaken to restore the rooms to their original appearance. Up to the year 1580, the Palazzo Ducale housed not only the Doge's apartments, government offices and courtrooms, but also a jail. It was only in the second half of the 16th century that Antonio de Ponte ordered the construction of a new jail, built by Antonio Contin around the year 1600. The new jail was linked to the Palazzo Ducale by a bridge, known today as the Bridge of Sighs. The Palazzo del Carle was the heart of the political life and public administration of the Venetian Republic. Therefore, when the Republic fell in 1797, its role inevitably changed. Venice was first subjected to French rule, then to Austrian, and then ultimately in 1866, it became part of a unified Italy.